Wizards of the Coast. Stainless games. Bullshit. Alienware sucks. Hey up, me old mucker, it's your pal Mark from the GBUK team. And I have a new batch of content for you. This is Magic 2015, Magic the Gavern, popular trading card game. And this is Friday Night Magic. This is the content which I'm running parallel with my own channel, the Game Buster Mark. And I thought, you know what? Why not produce the same series on the Game Busters UK channel? But record separate videos rather than just re-upload a video I've already recorded I'll do the exact same stuff but I'll, it's like I'm doing it well it's not like I'm doing it on two different channels I am doing it on two different channels if it kicks off and people like it I will continue to do it on Game Busters UK I'm gonna be doing it on my own channel regardless because it's what I want to do but if people on this channel viewers are liking it and want to see more and I, we get them thumbs up and we get them viewers then uh, Friday Night Magic can become a thing on GBUK so I'm gonna treat you to some epic Magic the Gathering now as I have said in my video on my own channel I am not a pro player at this at all in fact I'm very much a beginner that said, once I get going in a trading card game, once I know the X's and O's, I tend to be an average to decent player when I'm not too busy making misplays. <laughs> um, so yeah, without further ado, let's begin. It's going to be really interesting because, um, spoiler alert, I actually lost the match in the video on my channel so I'm hoping I can turn things around and kick start the series on Game Busters UK with a win so we'll see if I can do that running a red blue deck I don't worry folks if you're watching this and thinking well I don't really know much about Magic the Gathering because I'm gonna give you a little uh, I'm gonna give you little tidbits of information that'll help you pick up the game as I go along and because I'm very much a beginner myself, I will be reiterating a lot of stuff about the game uh, mechanics. So hopefully, if you watch this video, you know you'll be along for the ride as well, and you'll be along with the you'll uh, be on the same learning curve that I'm on. If you're a beginner like me, if not, and you're an established MTG player, feel free to give me any advice in the comment section below because I probably will need it, me old mucker. Because, like I said. <laughs> in the other video on my channel. I lost this first matchup. So um, let's see if we can get Friday Night Magic rolling on Game Busters UK with a nice win against a living death here. Our lovely our lovely friend with her shovel. Who runs a pure black deck. So here we go. You are confronted by a horrible sight, the mangled body of a planeswalker. From the shadows you hear a mad giggling and a chorus of groans. The corpse begins to twitch. The ghoul caller, Giza, emerges, happy to add another recruit to her army. So here she is, the ghoul caller, Giza. Obviously she sort of uh, summons zombies I guess. So give it a lowdown on Magic the Gathering. You're basically it's called a planeswalker. You have the ability to cast spells, whether they be creature spells or actual um, sorceries, which are divided into sorceries, instants, um, auras, and enchantments. All have various different effects. They can range from anything from draw cards to increase the strength of monsters, or summon monsters in the form of uh, tokens like this card, Krenko's Command. Um, basically, as you can see, as we zoom in on the cards, 
in the top right we have what's called the card's mana cost. Um, this is a red card as you can see so you need at least one mountain which is represented by the fire symbol, one mountain mana and one mana of any other colour. So you can have two um, fire, you can have two mountains on the board, then you can play this card. You can have a mountain and an island on the board which is a water mana and you can summon and you can play this card. Now that's a sorcery. And then we have our creatures. This is Crack and Hatchling. Um, if you're following me so far, my old mucker, this can be uh, played on the board by having a minimum of one island mana, which is obviously the blue water, um, in your mana pool. Then you can play Crack and Hatchling. Now, monsters are interesting because they have in the bottom right here their um, attack, uh, their strength. Uh, value, Kraken Hatchlin, is just a little Kraken baby sitting in the water, he's not really much of a problem, he is zero, so he can't do any damage, but he's a very good blocker, he has four toughness, now this is basically your monster's HP, and this is how much damage they can take off an opponent's monster um, before they are destroyed. Now obviously if we look at this monster, Marauding Moorhorn, it requires two mountains, and to mana of any other colour in your pool to be tapped and then you can summon the monster. It has 5 attack and 3 toughness and it can attack each combat if able unless you have a creature named Advocate of the Beast. There are a lot of monster effects as well in Magic the Gathering. I'll go over them as we come across them. Actually, I'll introduce you to one right now, Moon Heron. You'll see it has flying printed on, printed on the card. This card can only be blocked by monsters that have flying as well, or that have a special effect called Reach. Which, yeah, If you look at it from a physical point of view, this monster can just fly over other monsters. Only monsters that can actually reach it, or other flying monsters can f engage in battle with this card. Now another thing about Magic the Gathering is you have 20 uh, life, each player has 20 life. All monster attacks, rather than targeting monsters, as in um, other uh, card games like Yu-Gi-Oh for instance, uh, all monster attacks attack the player directly. And when you attack with a monster you have the option to block that attack with any of your other monsters on the board. So for instance, if my opponent has Kiln Fiend on the floor and attacks, I will lose one life. However, if I if I have a monster on the board and it's untapped, um, basically whenever you attack with a monster, it becomes tapped. That the card is then put in uh, is then switched into the. Um, you would then turn it right, so it's landscape rather than portrait. Um, if you play Yu-Gi-Oh, that you would know this as the defense position. So I'm going to use that terminology just to help things along. Um, so. If this card was untapped and Kiln Fiend attacked for one, rather than take the um, damage, I could block with Kraken Hatchling and it would absorb the damage and it would go to zero and free. And also, whenever monsters engage in battle in Magic the Gathering, the next turn they regain any lost uh, life. So it would go back to zero and four. That's enough though, me old mucker. I'm going to get into the action. Whoa, <laughs> that's too. That's that's a good hand, but I'm going to draw another hand. As you can see, here's our mana. You play one mana each turn. Mana is your bread and butter in um, Magic the Gathering. I'm going to keep this hand. It's a pretty good hand. So let's get into the action, me old mucker. I hope that little brief tutorial has cleared things up a little bit. But as we get going in the game, hopefully you'll see what I mean. So at this moment in time... I won't be able to play any monsters at this moment in time. However, I will be able to play Void Snare, which is a sorcery. So I'll be able to return uh, a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. I assume that means I can target a creature and put it back to the owner's hand. Now this opponent, Living Death, she's quite difficult for me because I am a beginner. Uh, what she does is she basically fills the board with multiple um, black monsters. Black is obviously um, undead uh, creatures. So there, I've played my island. There's nothing else I can do this turn. Right, she'll probably summon something this turn. She has two, two swamp, two black mana on the board. Right, I've got Windrake. This is a fairly decent monster to have. It's a 2-2 two -two, um, and it has flying. Which makes, which means that basically my attacks are all gonna get off pretty well. So I'm gonna play another island, 
and then uh, there's nothing else I can do, so it, my turn is over. Obviously, this first episode of Me Old Mecca will g generally just be, you know, in in introducing you to the elements. It, like I said, if you're a, if you're an established pro and you're watching this, um, obviously, uh, obviously you are probably going to want to skip skip ahead to the uh, later episodes as they uh, roll out. Uh, the enemy is playing a monster, Scaife Zombies, a two-two black creature. So she's got something on the board. Now you will notice that when this monster is played, it has a purple uh, sort of whirlpool effect on it. This means that it has summoning sickness, so it can't attack or it can't basically it can't attack the first um, turn that is played. However, it can block attacks. Monsters with summoning sickness can block attacks. Now, since that monster doesn't have uh, flying, I'm gonna play my island. I'm going to keep Void Snare in my hand. And for now I'm going to play Kraken Hatchling. It only costs one mana. It's a little blocker. See there, my one of my mana become tapped. So that reduces my mana pool available to only two blue. Um, which means I could I can only play Void Snare from my hand as it costs, as it costs only one blue mana. Now at the end of my turn my mana will become untapped, ready for use for the next turn. So I hope you're following this, my old mucker. It's really quite simple once you get the the, the basics down. Magic Magic's quite a simple game overall. You just have to the only the only way it really becomes a bit complicated is multiple creature effects. For me anyway, that's when it becomes a bit complicated. Other than that, it's not for tremendously um, complicated. So she's summoning a pretty big monster here a rotting fen snake this is a zombie snake its venom sacks are long gone but its crushing strength is somehow greater than ever 5-1 a lot of attack potential not a lot of toughness so you don't want to be blocking with this you want to be attacking with this um okay quite happy for her to sum that I can get rid of that as it only has one toughness but um, this is how she plays Living Death. She just fills the board with multiple creatures. Also, um, if you're watching this and you're unfamiliar with magic, you can pretty much summon as many monsters as you're able to in Magic the Cavern. As long as you have them, basically, as long as you have the mana, you can do it. So here we have Gutter Snipe, Goblin Shaman. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Gutter Snipe deals two damage to each opponent. I'm liking the effect of that, but I need my mountain on the board. And so I can use mountain and two blue. Um I'm thinking it's more advantageous for me to get Wind Drake out first. I, I I'm a little bit surprised that rotting fen snake doesn't have reach. Because if you play green decks, which are the mostly the nature decks, obviously black is zombies, so um, green decks are like nature. Most big snakes, um, like uh, this, what was that one called Draconian Asp or something? Most big snakes have uh, reach, which gives them the ability to actually combat um, with uh, flying monsters. Um, so I'm a bit surprised that uh, that snake, that zombie snake, doesn't have reach. But hey, whatever. Now next turn, I'm going to play gutter snipe. Then I'm going to use the instant. Hopefully, if I get a uh, mana in hand. So I'm already. I've. Already, I think I've got a better board than I had than I had in um, the video on my channel. I say that, but this opponent can easily fill the board. I'm going to eat that attack. I could block with the Kraken Hatchling, but it would die. And uh, I want to reserve it for blocking stuff like the 2-2s. Two yeah, she's getting another Scaife Zombie out. Or Scaife Zombies, I should say. Plural. I really, I, I really enjoy this game, even though I'm not fantastic at magic. I love... The background music, I love just how it's how I just love it. I just think it's a really nice, slow paced sort of game, card game that just sort of sit there and play. Right. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get Gutter Snipe on the board. Or I could go for Frost Links. But I'm going to go ahead and get Gutter Snipe on the board. Because he can deal 2 damage when I play a Sorcery. Now I'm going to use that Sorcery to put Rotting Fence Snake back in the opponent's hand. Which will then trigger Gutter Snipe's effect. Yeah, there we go, 18. And it'll send her snake back to her hand, so she'll have to expend mana again uh, to do it, to, to get that back on the field. And by that point, I should be able to deal with it. So we're going to attack with Windrake because it has flying. Her two monsters cannot block it. If they did block it, we would be getting a straight up one for one. We would each lose a monster. This is why flying monsters are particularly valuable in Magic the Gathering. If you can get them out early, you can deal some pretty good damage. So I'm sitting pretty well, I would say. Just going to get that Fen Snake back out. But it'll have Summoning Sickness, and by next turn I can... I can actually use Void Snare again. I have two in my. Uh, I have two. I have two. So I'm going to do that because we get the the two the two burn damage from Gutter Snipe. So uh, I have to say, folks, I'm liking. I'm liking how the match is turning out this time around. Last time around didn't go too well. I'm going to save my summon. I'm not going to get my fire cat out, even though it's a pretty big beat stick. Actually, you know what? I have nothing to lose. Let's get that cat out. I'm not going to attack with it, though. But it has summoning sickness anyway, so I won't be able to attack. That is probably how it should be. I'm not going to attack with gutter snipe. Well, I'm... Mm, I think... Because I could get another sorcery or an instant. But my Windrake can uh, get his attacks off unimpeded. So we've got the lead in this one, me old mucker. And we've got a more formidable uh, board presence as well. She's going to get that asp out. Uh, the f sorry, fen snake. See, I've sort of put her in a loop where she has to keep using her mana just to get the snake out. But um, that'll be the last turn where she's stuck in that loop. I will be able to... Um, I will be able to put that asp. I keep calling it an asp. The the fen snake. I will be able to. Um, I will be able to tap that snake, uh, and then it with frost links, and then it will uh, not be able to untap until its next untap step, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So there you go. I'm gonna tap your snake. It can't untap. And I'm going to put another blocker on the board. At this point, my field presence is looking pretty cushy. Let's let's attack with the fire cat, and let's attack with the wind drake, and see what happens. I'm thinking she'll block the fire cat. If she blocks the, f okay, let's attack with. Let's attack with Gutter Snipe as well. Perhaps that is not the best option, but I'm going to go for it. We're looking at 8 damage if this goes off. She's, she has to block with something, so I'm going to lose the. F I'm going to lose my cat, and I'm going to lose my Gutter Snipe. But it's a straight up trade. She's going to lose her monsters as well. thing is though, I think she can get her monsters back, whereas I, oh she runs more than two, yeah in magic you're allowed to run up to four copies of a monster I believe. I don't know how the ban lists work in magic, but um, obviously I don't think that should be a problem in this game at all. Oh look, 
another Windrake. This is brilliant. I'm loving this. We should have... We should have this match tied up soon. As long as I don't do anything stupid. We'll attack with Windrake. And... We'll just attack with Windrake. I don't want my blockers getting killed just yet. Cool razor. Yeah. See, she'll be able to get her one of her scaife zombies back due to Ghoul Razor's effect. When Ghoul Razor enters the battlefield, return a zombie card at random from your graveyard to your hand. 2-2. Two, two. Not a bad 2-2. Two, two. Pretty... Yeah, free mana to summon. For its effect, if you're running pure black, obviously, then... It's pretty, it's pretty decent. Obviously, we know she would get the scaife zombies in hand. Uh, why not play more mana? Mana is always good. But at this point, unless she gets something with flying, I have this all sorted thanks to my two Windrakes. She does have monsters with flying. She has the Carrion Crows. I think that's what they're called Carrion Crows. Or something crow. It's a 2 2. It's a. So she does have flying monsters. She just hasn't been able to get them out. Right, she is going to attack. So I need to block. Right. Cancel that. Block that with you. And block that with you. So that'll get rid of. Hey. That'll get rid of that. And. You know what, I am quite happy to take two damage off the remaining scaife zombies, so... Uh, I could block with the frost links, but then I'll lose the frost links, so... So I lose my maritime guard, but her snake is also dead. I don't lose the kraken. Because it has four toughness. Polluted dead. That's not going to... Well, the game's going to be over, so I don't really have to worry about that effect. It's a pretty good effect, I suppose. Get rid of one of your opponent's lands. Oh, look at this beast. Siege Dragon. I don't have enough mana to summon him, but he's my big bad boss monster. But here we go, we're going to go for game. She can't block. There we go, folks. We we did it. Brilliant to get a win off in Friday Night Magic on Game Busters UK. Sort of mitigates the loss I suffered on my own channel, and we win. We win a booster pack, Innistrad, which uh, is quite a good collection, if I remember. Let's see what we get. We got Timberland Guide, Fling. Okay, sacrifice a monster, deal damage to the opponent or a creature to that monster's power. And another Moon Heron. Not bad, Moon Heron, pretty good. So, me on Maka, next up is Cursed Existence. I shall see you. Next Friday, hopefully, if you've enjoyed watching this video, give the video a like. That will let me know that this is a series you want me to continue, that you like seeing, and that 
you know, you pretty much want to see more of it. So if you did enjoy the video, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.